if you don't take risks, you won't know the limitations or alleged limitations on whatever it is you're doing. You know, and I think this actually reminds me. So my wife's from Miami. We're in Florida right now. And Mm -hmm. she's from Miami. And for about six months, when my stepfather was pretty sick before he passed away, we went back and we spent some time in Wisconsin. My wife had never driven in snow. (laughs) So, (laughs) you know, if she wanted to go somewhere, you know, we had to talk about if it was snowing, how would she drive? So then one night I took her to a parking lot and Something I had to explain to her is like growing up, we, or my, at least myself, if not all my friends and people in snow states, like you need to know the limitations of braking, of accelerating, of a car, of snow. How far can you slide before you're going to be out of control? What to do with your hands on the wheel, you know? So you have to understand the limitations your own and the vehicle's limitations and how they react together. Or you're never going to be a good driver in those conditions, you know, and I think that it's the same thing here is like, until you take the risk and try and find out, you can control the environment for the most part, but you need to have that forethought and figure out what that Mm -hmm. looks like, like an empty parking lot at night. What does that look like in business? You have to take those risks to find out. You'll never know. You won't. And then you'll, you may wake up in seven years, like you said, and figure out you've been doing it wrong the whole time because you never took the day or, you know, year long risk to figure it out. Yeah. I love the uh, the snow analogy. I had to write that down. I just uh, I grew up <laughs> when I was learning to drive, I was in central New York, lots of snow. Oh, and yeah. you would go to those empty parking lots and you'd go and like I would do everything from driving as fast as I could, slam on the brakes, let's see how they react. Hit the e-brake, let me see what it's like when I go sideways. Granted, a lot of that was a lot of fun too. So of course I was of course, trying to have yeah, fun. Yeah. Uh, uh-huh. but when it came down to actually driving, I learned so much more about how this vehicle moves, you know, by by putting yourself through those through the wickets, you know. Um how have you seen being able to do that in a business because I'm, I'm contemplating how i would i love the analogy but i'm trying to think through how that works inside <clears> of the business what what would you say you've done to kind of um, test the limits of your business or your skills in the business to see where where you would fail yeah i would say you know anywhere from taking a chance on you know an expensive employee because you believe in you know their capabilities even though they don't bring any money with them mm-hmm. um that's something that we're exploring right now um to maybe you know instead of uh, a retainer agreement with a client, you are doing like a partial retainer, but with some sort of license licensing agreement on the back end with some, you know, merch line that they're trying to come up with so that you're committing to be able to operate that to make the money off, off that. That's a big risk, especially, you know, for maybe an agency, not to say that we're doing that now, but it is on the table for a marketing agency to take a risk on making money on the back end from merch. Mm-hmm. That's a huge risk could be absolutely massive or it could be a failure and we have to reevaluate ever doing yeah. that again and losing much money, not only on the Delta on the client, but also probably the money that you put into that program. So little things like that, I think, um, I think taking a risk in this regard isn't always obvious. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's being creative. It's like, well, what if, Instead of this, we did this. Like, for example, that. Okay, well, you can't afford the $8,500 retainer. How about you pay $4,000 a month and give us 99% licensing on, you know, these five properties to do whatever we want with it. So just even being able to come up with that concept, uh, you know, you have to be creative, but that's also a risk. So it's not always inherent. It's not always obvious. But risks exist. You just have to find them. And Mm -hmm. chances are, if you're good at what you do, they can pay off. Yeah. Um, I'm looking at those as from a from a dad perspective. One of those risks. By the time this comes out, I will have already made the decision. But um, I'm looking at doing homeschooling, right? Uh, which is a very odd. I would have never thought that I'd be looking at that, right? But my sons already go to private school, but now I've been looking at homeschooling. I love to travel. I love to go places, and yeah, the school system does not really allow that for a major. <laughs> and I also want to be able to impact my kids on a higher level. Uh, to me, it's a very large risk, right? Because I'm running a couple companies, and I'm trying to figure out, like, do I have the time? Do I have the patience? Like, by the time my kids get home from school and I have to help with homework, I've already spent my whole, like decision making <laughs> for the day sure. like I'm, I'm spent by that point so i already don't have yeah. patience so i'm like okay well how, do, how am i going to homeschool um to me it's a big risk but i feel like the risk is going to pay off a lot if i'm able to like when i'm able to successfully accomplish this this task right so um you know and if if i if i fail then you know it, it's only my kids no big deal right no but uh <laughs> but no i mean i i'm not gonna know unless i take the risk i'm not gonna know whether or not yeah. it was a good idea if not like all the research that i'm doing tells me there should be and um you know but i think the same thing goes with the business like do the research know what it is you're getting into come up with the right plans 
put it in place. If yeah. it works, it works. If it doesn't, be smart to be able to take it and, and jump on it. Uh, jump on the, the totally. change if you need to. So, Yeah, and I think, too, like my how I view risks with fatherhood is probably a little bit smaller risk, but more of them, you know, like <clears throat> something so simple can change your kid's life. You know, like we're, we're talking about going on vacation to Panama this year. My wife has some family down there in their Panama city. So it's like, we're looking at what that's not far from here. It's a three hour flight from, mm-hmm. from Florida basically. Right. Um, so that's not really a risk, but it's like, when we get there. Are we going to do like an overnight on a catamaran? Like things that are like, they're risky for us as parents. It's like, I don't yeah. I have no idea how, like how any of that stuff's going to go, but those are just t- small, smaller risks. But I think they add up to like completely changing a kid's life, you know, put yeah. that in a, in a, for the better. Right. So, um, yeah, just, just, a, if you have any recommendations, if you've ever been to Panama, I would love, I, would I have not, I have never been to Panama. Okay. So I, uh, we've traveled a lot. So my middle child was born in Japan where my wife and I were both stationed oh, cool. in Japan. So he, he was born there. And then, um, when he was seven months old, we got to America, but the U S was his sixth country that he'd been to. So oh my gosh. yeah, he bounced around all over. So Japan and Spain and Bali and, um, wow. Uh, Singapore and uh, Portugal. So we went all over the place with them and still love to travel with them all the time. Um, and now we've got to get a passport for our newest. I love looking at the passport photo for, for my kids. Like with, cause they're like, I literally like held them up like for a picture trying to get like, hold their face. with so a little brand new baby trying to get passport photos. It'd be the same for this one. So oh, man, that's but somebody cute. told me after my second one tip for any of the fathers out there who need to get uh, passport photos for their babies is, um, lay them down on a sheet, a white sheet and take the picture from above. I was like, how did yeah. I not think of that nonsense? Like I just went to a normal passport right. photo place and I'm like trying to hold up a two month old, a one month old to get the face to look into a kid, like ridiculous. But yeah, much I did wiser. See that on down. A, a parenting hack somewhere. Yeah. yeah. We, we're, we have to do that pretty soon actually for, for this one. Yeah. If you're going to be going to Panama, you might want to do that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I've got my stack of passports here that I need to mail in and get them all redone. So. Um, we yeah. want to, my oldest wants it. We asked him, we said, Hey, do you want to do, um, an adventure for your birthday or do you want to, you know, get a couple presents? And he's like, Oh no, totally adventure. So he said he wants to go on a cruise. One of the cruises that has the water park on it is really all he cares about. He just wants to go on one of those cruises because he's seen it on something and he's like, I want to do it. So, all right, well, let's, let's go to a few more countries. Let's get it in. So. Um, and we could say that him wanting to do that as a result of a series of risks that you've taken yeah. over the years, right? To get yeah. in there that someone wants to have an adventure and experience over a couple material items. I think that's really amazing. Yeah, it's, that's it's really cool. a lot of fun to be able to. I think that, you know, I, if I were to guess, the background that you come from, you're going to be very similar in doing a lot of that stuff. Like my, we bought a small dirt bike for him when for his fifth birthday um that is now going to be passed to his little brother because he is it's too big for him now or he's too big for it now it's the 50 cc and he's like yeah. his knees are touching his elbows at this <laughs> point you know so uh so i'll be bumping him up to probably a 110 here shortly but um but they i mean crashing into trees all right you got to get up got to try again got to keep going you know and you press on you keep it like so you know jumping off of uh jumping off the diving board doing backflips on the trampoline doing whatever like going out and taking the risks and having fun and traveling and um, you know, now, you know, he, uh, my brother-in-law brought over, um, a scuba tank. I don't remember even why he did it, but he brought it over, um, <laughs> and we were playing with it in the pool. And my eight year old is just down there, just scuba diving away, just having a blast. Oh he's God, like, this is amazing. awesome. You know, so he's down there just sucking off the scuba tank, just having a great time. <laughs> I, I can't even get him into scuba That's class so until cool. he's 12, I think is the, the minimum. Um, wow. so now he's going to be, he's going to be a little pro by the time he's actually allowed that to do scuba awesome. diving. So. But yeah, th- so I think cool. that the setting them up for those types of things is, you know, totally. I, I mean, they've, they've got like it, <laughs> that's part of life is that adventure. Like you're not living life yeah. if you're not having those types of adventures. So no, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I will say that, me when that people are probably... like, I don't like to travel with my kids. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Yeah. Like you gotta yeah. travel with your kids. That is probably one. You know, if I have to give my my uh, my real father one credit it would be although he was not around the one thing i do remember it was i don't remember what birthday it was maybe seven or eight or something it was do you want to go into karate lessons because i was like i wanted to be in karate Mm -hmm. or do you want a dirt a dirt bike and i'm like that was it was actually a tough decision that would be yeah but i chose the dirt bike you know and i think that 
I mean, I could, my life could be different if I, if I yeah. chose karate and had the discipline, you know, that side of things, or I had a dirt bike where I was just shredding through the woods, crashing mm-hmm. every instance, learning from, you know, my failures and how to operate a clutch and all that stuff. You know, I think that really kind of helped define my extreme oh, for sure. side probably a little bit. I yeah. would imagine. So, yeah. yeah. For the same for, for our daughter, as soon as I can convince my wife. Oh yeah. Is she not uh, on that same board? Not quite as extreme, I yeah. would say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I tell people like my wife shoots <clears throat> shoots guns and rides motorcycles. So if our daughter wants to be a princess, we're totally screwed. So um, <laughs> I don't I don't know what we're going to do. But hopefully, if she wants to be a princess, she'll be a dirt bike riding princess. So that'll yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, I could Absolutely. only hope. But um, but yeah, it, to me, it's it's part of the adventure. You know, if if uh, but every child's going to be different. So you know, it's if it if you know if one likes it and the other one doesn't, it is what it is. 